And, uh, and I'm, I'm, how many people are believing for God to do something? Because, you know, unless God moves, where are we? We're shot, aren't we? We don't have a leg to stand on. But anyhow, what I want to share this morning is dare to believe. Dare to believe. And I want to just take it a little bit further where Tom was going this morning. We're living in a time where it's easy to give up. People are giving up all over the place. Suicide rate is, is an alarming rate. People are going into all different kinds of ways, trying to find whatever they're looking for to get out of the, the, the rat race or to get out of the pressure of life, whether it be drugs. I, can't, I honestly cannot understand why a young person, a healthy young person, would ever even consider taking ice knowing that it's going to destroy their life. Why would people do that? But you see, there's a hopelessness that gets around people. And so people are looking for something that will try to get them out of their hopelessness. And we know that there's only one thing that will do that, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I believe that there's a lot of us that have been taken out of that thing, hopelessness. So don't give up. Don't ever give up. It's easy to give up. It's easy to try to another way. But the Word of God says this. It says, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And I, and I believe that, that there is a language of the Bible and there are things that God says that many times just goes over our head because we don't really grab hold of what God's really saying or perhaps unbelief has got inside us. And when we hear these things, our natural thinking our natural mind starts to argue with the Word of God and you don't even realize you're doing it. You don't understand what's going on. And we start to reject instead of grabbing hold of what God has got to say. You see, the purpose of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it says this in the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It, but, it says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And how many people have heard that scripture a million times perhaps? You've read it many, many times. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. You see, the, the purpose of the outpouring of the Spirit wasn't so as that we could join the Tongue Talkers Club or that we'd be welcome into the Pentecostal circle. It was so as that we would receive power to become witnesses under Him. He wants us to be witnesses of His power. He wants us to be witnesses of His freedom. Too many Christians today are walking through claiming to be Jesus, having a bumper sticker on the back of their car, honk if you love Jesus or whatever it might be, but living in failure and defeat. What this world needs to see is the church triumphant the church victorious, ruling and reigning with Christ. And that's what Jesus wants for our lives. He wants a people that will be witnesses of His power, witnesses of His victory, witnesses of everything that is done for us, people living in victory, demonstrating His power. When things come, we, we know what it is. The Holy Spirit comes to take mere men and women and impregnate them with the power of God. See, if we can start to understand what God wants for us, and it's not just some special elite club that He does this for, but it's for every believer that can receive the Holy Spirit. He wants to impregnate you with His power so that when trouble comes, what God has put inside you would begin to rise up and you'd take authority over that thing that would come against you instead of falling to it, instead of allowing it to come and rob, kill, and destroy. The Bible says that out of your innermost being, see, God wants to come on the inside. He wants to impregnate us with His power 
souls that when trouble comes out of our innermost being will rise, something will rise up from within and it will come out of our mouth and we will declare that is not true. And what Tom was talking about this morning was this great professor, this man of great learning and great education that had all the theories and everything that he thought was right can also be overtaken, or I'll use a word, trumped, by a small statement, my word is truth. Is that what you was that what, what just, that was a statement? Hey, my word is absolute truth. And I believe with us as Christians and as a church, we've got to come and we've got to make a shift in the way we think that we start to really think and understand that God's word is absolute truth. And when God says, by my stripes you are healed, it is not just some fable, but it is absolute truth. And if we can start to do that, it will start to erode the unbelief out of our thinking. Anybody hearing what I'm saying here today? Because you see, his words are spirit. They are not natural words. The professor's words were natural words. He spoke natural words that most surely to a majority of people make a lot of sense. The Word of God, the Bible says, that people will not accept it because it's foolishness to them. They can't comp- the natural mind can't comprehend it. But it's when the Word of God touches your spirit man and your spirit man understands what the Word of God says, it will rise up and it will destroy every word that comes out of that professor's mouth. Every word that comes out of the enemy's mouth. And the enemy's speaking loud and clear in the days that we're living in. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Understanding the truth will make you free. Trying to understand a lie will bring you into defeat. See, when you, when you believe the Word of God, when, when somehow or other inside us we, we, start to, we start to realize that it's true, even though we may be going through something, but something in the inner man starts to, starts to rise up a little bit. We, we sing songs about out of the ashes. I don't expect and I don't believe God expects us just to stand there roaring and shouting and, and, and you know, but I believe that he wants us out of the ashes to begin to rise. Out of unbelief, we begin to rise. Out of brokenness, we begin to rise. Out of failure and defeat, we begin to rise. And we begin to allow the Word of God to penetrate into our lives. And as that Word of God starts to penetrate, we begin to rise up. We, we start to declare, we start to speak what God says. You see, when, when that starts to happen, when, when that spirit man and all of a sudden where the devil says you'll never make it, and then God says, yes, you will. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. It, it brings into play scriptures that seem impossible in your natural thinking. Because the doctor might have said it, no, the solicitor might have said it, the accountant might have said it, somebody else might have said it. But that doesn't mean it's truth. But when the Spirit of God comes in and speaks, the Word of God is absolute truth. And you can, you can lay your life on that. You see, when the, these, these scriptures come into play that seem impossible, like no weapon formed against you can prosper. And this sister at the back there the, today was telling me how that, that she's just received this grant from the government that is exceedingly abundantly above all that she could ever imagine or think. They want to give her a new, uh, what do you call it, leg, and they want to give her a new wheelchair, and they want to do this, and they want to do that, and they want to do that. They want to give her a grant to the tune of $64,000. To help her, to help the family in a time there. You see, 
when you can start to believe in the person that, that was giving all this grant out and things like that, he said, I've never seen anything like this before. He said, actually, I, I could see it on the, uh, for three years on one hand, the amount of people that have got grants like this, but I've never seen anything to this amount. And the man out of his own mouth said, you must have somebody. <laughs> you must have somebody. I got somebody, hallelujah. We've got somebody helping us and working with us that want to help us. You see, it brings things into play that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Do you believe that today? This is not natural, but it's God intervention. How many people want a God intervention in your life? Come on, how many people want a God intervention? Come on, tell me the truth. I do. How many people want a God intervention in your life? Come on, why? let's ask God right now. Father, I need a God intervention in my life. I, I need to hear you this morning. I need to hear your voice this morning. I want you to break down all the lies of the devil that's, that comes around me. You know what? My, if you look at the hands that are raised, most of us are like the rest of us. <laughs> You are not Robinson Crusoe on this island, on, all on your own. God is with us. God before me, who can be against me? Have faith in God. We, we make this big thing out of faith. What is faith really? Faith is simply believing. Just believe what the Word of God says. Believe what God says because what God says, and I'm so glad Tom did the communion this morning because what God says is absolute truth. And you will know the absolute truth and the absolute truth will absolutely set you free. <laughs> That's what it's all about, friends. It's breaking the stronghold of our mind. Have a quick look with me in the book of Hebrews, the, the, the chapter of faith. Hebrews chapter 11. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Everybody say, not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the absolute word of God. You believe that today? So the things which were seen were made of things which are... Sorry. Let, let my mouth get back to... So the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Now listen, when you hear that, you see, if you... If you just went up to somebody and started talking like that, they would think you're crazy. Correct? Things that were made were made with things that weren't visible. They would think you But you see, what you've got to understand, that is the language of the Bible. Can you hear what I'm saying here? See, you've got to think differently when you're reading the Bible. Because the Word of God is absolute truth. We're here today because God spoke a word and the worlds were framed. God made them out of nothing. Now God's made us promises, but you've got to understand the language of the Bible has to be spiritually discerned and not naturally discerned because the Word of God is foolishness to the natural man. So... If we're going to be Christians, if we're going to be Christians, we can't live according to the natural. We've got to live according to the supernatural. We've got to discern the Word of God differently to natural thinking. How can God make things out of nothing? Because He's God. Because that's who he is. 
He made man out of the dust of the earth. And if we go through this, it says, by faith Abel, I'm not going to say any more, by faith Enoch. For without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, with, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. We've got to be able to somehow or other believe God, believe this word, believe what God says is yea and amen. When you start to believe the, the, the things that seem impossible to the natural mind, all of a sudden starts to kick in and something from the innermost being comes up and starts to come into agreement and all of a sudden you find in your heart in your spirit man, you started to say, God, God, you can do that. God, that's true. And, and, and that's by faith, Noah, by faith, Enoch, by faith, all these people, by faith, Abraham. By faith, by faith. Everybody say, by faith, by faith, by faith. God did amazing things. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it, will he not bring it to pass? Whatever God says in this word, he will bring to pass. Amazing. In John 4, 24, it says God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If the same spirit, Romans 8, 11, that raised Christ from the dead, he dwells within you, he will quicken your mortal body. He will make alive your mortal body. He will quicken something to you. John 15, verse 5 says, Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. We've got to understand the language of the Bible. We've got to understand that we can catch something and call something down. In the Old Testament, we find stories there that would blow your natural mind. We find a story here in 1 Kings 18.21 of Elijah. He says, how long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord, if the Lord is God, let's follow him. Hey, church, I believe this is where we're at. This is where, where we've got to come to. We can't have two opinions. We can't try to live in the flesh and have a spiritual manifestation. We can't doubt and then expect to be healed. We can't do those sort of things. And, and we can be between two opinions. And it says, if God is God, well, let's serve him. That's why I say, church, if God is God, let's believe him. If God is God, let's believe what he says. If he says I can be healed, that means I can. If he says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that's mean I, that means I can. If it means that I can triumph over the enemy, that means I can. No weapon formed against us can prosper. We can condemn those things. That means we can. That means we can live in victory. It means we can, we can, we can, we can, we can. We can triumph over the devil. You see, when we get born again and baptized in the Holy Spirit, we are truly born again. See, that, that, that can be just a fable. But you know what? We need to sit down and meditate on what, what does it mean to be born again? I was listening to a tape that Marnie sent me and it was about this guy that was a, was a Muslim. And Christians would come up to him and try and get him saved. And he'd been versed and trained on how to handle Christians. 
And it asked them, it asked them questions about God. And, and the Christians couldn't answer the questions. And so he would then give his philosophy and bamboozle them, and they walk away defeated until he met a man that knew God and knew what the Word of God said. Because this young man has also been versed. Friend, you've got to know, you've got to understand, what does it mean to be born again? What does it mean? I was born again. <laughs> that means that the old man had a death, burial, and... No, no. <laughs> he wants to have a resurrection. But the old man was, had die, has to die that I have to be born again. But I don't get born again of the natural. I get born again of the Spirit. Now the Spirit of God is in me. The Spirit of God now is in me. And sometimes what I'm sharing here right now might sound double Dutch or whatever it might be, but when you get born again, you get born again, born of the Spirit. And in Hebrews 13 verse 5, when you get born again, God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you. People say, ah, all these things, but, but God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus said on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus was forsaken in my st instead of me. I needed to be forsaken. What does forsaken mean? I will never forsake you. What it really means, he said, I will never give up on you. <laughs> oh, chuckabundi. <laughs> I'll never give up on you. You might stumble and fall, but I will never give up on you. You might do this or that, but I will never give up on you. I will never forsake you. I will never, ever, ever, ever forsake you. I will never desert you. I will never leave you. I won't leave you on your own. I, I won't leave you there. To, I, I'll never desert you. And a lot of people need to hear this one. I will never, ever, ever abandon you. You've had mates and you've had friends and you've had people that you've loved and cared for. They have abandoned you. Jesus said, I will never, ever abandon you. I will be with you all the days of your life. Jesus is saying, I'll never give up on you. I'll never give up on you. Hebrews 13, 6, it says, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. I'll never, ever, I'll never, ever, I'll never, ever. Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed by faith. Amazing. Something else that I wanted to say there, but I can't find it, but that's all right. You see, is Christ in you the hope of glory? He lives in me. I don't deserve it, but he does. I thank God some 50 years ago now, it might be, that Nancy and I walked out the front of a church and we gave our life to Christ. Had no idea what that was going to do. Had no idea. But the moment that we cried out that cry, God help us, God help us, the Spirit of God came in. And oh man, we've been through some stuff. Anybody here been through some stuff? Come on. Anybody here been through some stuff? How many people can testify, I will never ever leave you nor forsake you? I will never, man. You. Yeah. Is there anybody else here that's an idiot? <laughs> or is it just me? Just me, thank you. I feel so much better now. I feel abandoned. <laughs> Is 
with all my wanting to succeed and be victorious and rule, oh, want, wanted finance and everything like that. I went into business. I had my own real estate agency. I had my own building firm. I had nine carpenters working for me, painters, goodness knows what. I had my own vehicle with Myers Constructions on the back. <laughs> I didn't have a clue what I was doing. As a result, I went broke. We owned two homes, we owned boats and cars and stuff and everything like that. I had to sell everything we had. Ended up, sold, we had two, the two houses, we sold them within a week, we were homeless. I wanted to kill myself, I wanted to do everything stupid because I felt a failure. But you see, there's one thing that happened, I gave my life to Jesus. And he said, I'll never ever leave you nor forsake you. A lot of everything else, all my hopes, everything left me. But we were there and we'd, we'd applied to look after neglected children and they rejected us and told us that we, there was no places available and that it would never happen because we were only young at the time, 27. 27 years of age. I'll never ever leave you nor forsake you. In the pit of negativity, failure, everything about it. I, I, I actually was very serious. I rang my wife one day seven times when she was at work and she said, Neil, what's wrong with you? Because I, I had the twenty two rifle. And Nancy said to me, she said, Neil, I don't care if we've got no money. We've got each other. Money, that's, it doesn't matter if we've lost everything. We've got each other. See, to me, that was like a prophetic word and it just penetrated and it went through. And I'm, what I'm talking about today, I know what I'm talking about. The word of God is powerful. Homeless, hopeless, nowhere to go. We're sitting there. I was sitting on the patio. I can remember it like it was yesterday. I went and got the mail from the, from the, from the place. But most of it was, dear John, I didn't go bankrupt. We paid all of our debts. I had enough money to pay all of our debts. But when we finished, we got a check for $150 from the solicitor, or pound from the solicitor's office. I need to find that we got a 145-pound bill from somebody else, so we had five quid. We got a letter there from the Methodist Church. It said, position has come available. How soon can you come? I rang him up and I said, well, can come now. <laughs> but in two weeks, we had our car packed, sold everything we had and left with five quid. Had enough money to get petrol. And I said, I don't know where we got that from. But anyway, we got there. You see, God will never ever leave us nor forsake us if we can keep our eyes on Him. If we can trust Him. And you see, what that did was that opened up my life. It opened up Nancy's life. We started ministering to those neglected kids. We started doing stuff. And, and, and before very long, we, got, we started our own children's church. And then from there, we went and started the church in Mumbai. From there, I became the international president of Christian Outreach Center. From there, I became here. <laughs> I must say, I, no. <laughs> but I'm more excited today, and sometimes more distressed than I've ever been in my life. Because the enemy wants to steal from us. But God will never, ever leave us. He will never, ever forsake us if we can keep our eyes on him. So, Father, today I just ask you to help these people. Help me. Help us to understand the language of the Spirit. To understand, my God, that your word is absolute. Your word is truth. And I pray, Lord, even out of the ashes today, and Lord, I remember myself as I sat on that porch out of the ashes out of the ashes of failure and defeat and negativity and everything else, out of despair, not knowing where to go, out of the ashes, we began to rise that day. We began to rise out of the ashes and we headed on a journey 
not knowing really where it was going to take us, not knowing really where it was going to end, not knowing what was going to happen, my God. But, oh, my God, your word is truth. You will never, ever leave us nor forsake us. You will never abandon us. You will never just leave us on our own, my God. Where You will go with us and you will help us. And, Father, I pray today that, that you will help us to break out of the strongholds of the enemy that gets into our minds and into our thinking. And, Father, that we would go into our destiny, into our purpose, into our plan. And I believe for Nance and I, I believe that our, the greatest destiny and the greatest plan that you have for our lives is ahead of us. I believe for this church, Lord, we're not looking at what we see, we're looking at what we know. We believe that our greatest destiny is ahead of us. We believe that our future is good in your hands, it is secure. And my God, that you're going to take us and you're going to lead us and you're going to pour out your Spirit upon us. And my God, you're going to raise us up, my Father. You're going to raise us up. You're going to raise us up. And for that, we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Satan, we're just going to enjoy so much as we watch you getting thrown and kicked into that pit. And we're just believing for the church to rise up and begin to drive you back, begin to push you back, begin to push you back. As an individual, my God, I pray that many of us would rise up today and push back and push back and push back your thoughts and what you're trying to put on us. And Father, that we will conquer and we will overcome. I thank you, God, that your word declares that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Lord, that we are a Joshua generation of people. I don't care what people says, it's what you say about us. And Lord, your word is declared, and that's what we believe, what you say about us. We are more than conquerors. And Father, I'm praying for people today that need healing in their body. I'm praying, my God, for people today that need breakthroughs in finances. I pray, Father, for people that need to, to fight to know the will of God and the mind of Christ. I pray, my God, for people today that, that, want, that can't see above their toenails at the moment because the enemy's got them pushed so far down. Father, I pray that out of the ashes they'd begin to rise. Father, that you'd put a word in their heart this morning and cause them to stand tall and start to push back the lies of the enemy and grab hold of the truth that says you will know my truth and the truth will make you free. And Father, today I pray you'll have your way in Jesus' name. And everybody said, I'm just going to ask you to stand to your feet right now and if God's been speaking to you this morning and you want to rise up and you want to kick some devil butt, I pray my God today that you'll just run out to the front here and believe for God to come and minister to you in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on, let's believe God today. Believe God, believe God, believe God. The language of the Bible, the Word of God, the Word of God, the Word of God. The enemy could have a field day. Don't, let, don't go away from here today without you respond to what God is saying. God is talking to you. Come, come, come. Let the Spirit of God get hold of you. I see couples coming out. That is amazing. That is amazing. That is amazing. Because together I believe that God is raising up people like that. People, God wants to touch people today. God wants to move on people today. You've got to see that impossible situation. You've got to see it, but see God in it. Nancy prays for people and she says, What's God doing? What's God saying? What's God doing? Friend, you've got to see what God's doing in the midst of your storm. You, you've got to see. I might not have been able to see it that day. I might not have been able to see it. All I saw was the brokenness and the despair, the failure and the defeat. I felt so, 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 I, I can't even think of words. I felt like a failure. I'd fail my wife. I'd fail my family. I'd failed everybody. I'd failed everything. And as I, that's all I could see. And as I, all I could see was I wanted a suicide. I wanted to get out. I wanted a way out. But what was God doing? God was making a way. God was making a way. God is making a way. So come, come, come this morning. Let God make a way for you. Let God make a way.